choreographer and instructor for the beginners and the intermediate classes. I am a sophomore and I study psychology and dietetics. Um, yeah. Awesome. Um, so we did put a little presentation for you all uh, just to kind of introduce our troop and our history. Uh, if you want to. Thank you. Um, so our purpose as belly dancers, we strive to educate um, our members and everyone who, you know, joins our troupe on Middle Eastern culture through belly dance. Um, we encourage people of all backgrounds and identities to join, but a, um, to join the actual troupe, it is limited to FSU students. Um, our lessons are open to everyone in the Tallahassee community, so we are really excited to show you all a little thing that Flavia has put together today. And a brief introduction to what Betty Dance is and our history. Um, so Betty Dance traces back over 6,000 years. There's traces of it even during the empires and with the sultans. And it's rich in Middle Eastern history and culture. Um, there's different styles of it. There's Oriental, there's, um, there's drum, there's Baladi, there's Saidi, where it comes from, like this beautiful umbrella, as I like to think of it, where you have your Rak Sharki, which is your traditional belly dance, and from there stems different styles depending on your Middle Eastern culture and your background and the country that you come from. Um, that's a quick introduction to belly dance and its history and what it is. Um, Belly dance is also used to celebrate the women and, um, you know, the style and it's very heavy and influenced in the tradition and the culture. It was first introduced to the Americas back in 1893 at Chicago's World's Fair. And that's where the coined English term belly dance comes from. But that's just a little quick history and a quick synopsis. Over here on the side, we have different pictures of styles of it. So you have Shabi, which is um, Egyptian street, street dance, and you have Saidi and then you have Oriental right over here. And on that note, we would love to transfer it over, but before that, this is where you can find us on our social media, our Facebook and our Instagram, and we also have a Twitter and our YouTube page as well, if you just look up the FSU Belly Dancers. And with that note, we would love to transfer it over to Chef Jesse, who will be teaching us how to cook baklava. I'm very excited for this myself, um, and yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And so now, yes, uh, Jesse, we will pass it off to you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Michelle. Hey, everybody. Welcome to International Coffee Hour. Uh, Laura and I are here in the Globe Kitchen, and I'm really excited to bring you baklava today. This is a, a old uh, Globe Coffee Hour recipe, and um, so we've made this here for quite a while for hundreds of people, um, and it took me many. I guess, years of studying baklava to figure out how to make it uh, this easily. This is an awesome recipe, really easy to make at home. I spent years making it the hard way, which I, I do not recommend to anybody because it's very time consuming. And this one, this is a foolproof method. So um, I hope everybody gives this a shot at home. And uh, let's see, let's get into this thing. Uh, very basic, you know, sparse ingredients here. Uh, you've got to have phyllo dough. Uh, you're going to get this in the Publix freezer section or freezer section of a uh, Mediterranean kind of store or Middle Eastern store. Uh, you want to get uh, a big enough pack where you're going to have at least 40 sheets. You can look on the back and look at the serving size and it'll usually tell me how many sheets of phyllo are in there. Uh, they usually come kind of rectangular shaped. It usually has the dimensions of each sheet and everything. Uh, so today we're going to use this. Um, nine by nine inch pan. You could also use a nine by 13 inch pan with these size uh, phyllo sheets. Um, but you, you know, you can pretty much use any size pan because you can cut this dough really easily to, to fit the size. So um, essential, got to have phyllo dough. Um, this is a manufactured product. It means pretty impossible to make at home. You, you're, it's really, you're never going to get it this thin. But, um, you know, back in the day, they did make this thing by hand. Um, kind of turned out a little bit differently, but you know, let's see here. We got walnuts. Uh, this is three cups of walnuts. I roasted these in an oven at 350 degrees for about six, seven minutes. You don't want them to get dark. They'll get, you know, pretty bitter. So you just want to get them lightly toasted. 
You can also use pistachios if you have a lot of money. Um, you can use a combination of nuts, uh, but the walnuts is really, really tasty. They, you know, they've got this bitterness and they're very oily and fatty. So they really hold up well to that, all that butter you're going to add to this and all that sugar and um, really works well. Uh, in the walnuts, we're going to mix a third cup of sugar. Um, and then other than that, we've got, this is a simple syrup we're going to make. We've got one cup sugar, three quarter cup water, and uh, we're going to boil that together and then flavor it with some lemon juice and then some orange blossom water. And you can also do rose water. And so yeah, this is a, a Lebanese version of uh, baklava. There's also baklava uh, that has like honey and spices, maybe like cinnamon. Um, and so there's, you know, where, you know, wherever you go in the Mediterranean, Middle East, there's all types of different versions. There's definitely a pomegranate syrup that can be added to the sugar syrup. Um, there's different nuts that you can use. There's all types of different uh, waters and flavorings. And so it gets, it gets pretty exciting. It, you know, anywhere you go, there's gonna be a different type of specialty. And this one is definitely um, no honey, no spices, walnuts, sugar, rose or orange, or rose and orange sometimes, uh, blossom water. Uh, and that really gives it this kind of like nice perfumey kind of essence to the, to the aroma. It's really nice. But uh, all right, let's get into this. Um, first things first, uh, we've got two sticks of butter that are not on the table. That they're back here in this pan. And you're going to want to make uh, a clarified butter. This uh, recipe, the, the trick to it is, is making this butter. And so you take your two sticks and you melt them very slowly. And uh, butter is a combination of several things. You've got water that's in butter. You've got the yellow part, that's the, the butter oil, basically. And then you've got the creamy stuff on top, that's cream solids. And, and so clarified butter is removing the cream solids and the water, so you just have the buttery oil left over. And uh, this is essential to do this for this recipe. So I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. Let's bring it over here. So you want to be gentle with this. I've got a big ladle, and um, I'm gonna get in here, Laura. Okay. Well, let's try it with a small ladle. So first off, you're gonna just try to get these cream solids over to one side. And having a little ladle helps kind of maneuver them. They all float on top here. The cream solids on top of the oil, and then the water is at the bottom. So you basically just want to open up a little patch of the buttery oil stuff. If you get a little cream in there, it's okay, but then you just go ahead and you know, pull that out. So this way, when we, we butter our phyllo dough, we're not getting any water or you know the cream solids mixed in, which is going to make your dough uh, end up sticking together and not being as crispy as it should. Having a crispy crust is very important here. And so if we're just adding the, the oil from the butter, that will not make it soft and kind of sticky like water would. Just kind of like a, like a pie crust. When you're making pie crust, you don't, you want to mix in your butter ingredients first and you only add enough water to get the crust to come together. And that's how you get that flaky kind of crusty dough. Can ghee be uh, used? Ghee can be used. Yeah, yeah. So ghee is clarified butter, but it's a little bit different. It's cooked longer so that the water evaporates from the bottom and then the cream solids toast on the bottom of the pan. So it has a nutty, toasty flavor to it. And um, I think that that could really make your baklava taste, you know, give it another dimension of kind of toastiness with those walnuts. I think that'd be really nice. Um, and yeah, you can definitely buy ghee at the Middle Eastern or Mid Indian store. Uh, but this is an easy way to, to do it at home. You can also do a pound of, a whole pound of this and then refrigerate the extra. Anyways, here we go. You don't need to collect every last ounce of it, but there we go, that's most of it. All right. So we've got our clarified butter. We're gonna put that over here. 
The walnuts have been roasted, but we do need to chop them. So we're gonna use our food processor here. You can do it by hand. Uh, but it, with three cups of walnuts, it will take you a little bit of time. And if you use a food processor, make sure you just uh, pulse it. And you do not want this to turn into walnut butter. So here, it's gonna be kind of loud. So it's kind of challenging because you do want to get it to the point where it's almost turning to butter. You want it to be ground really fine. Like this right here, this is too chunky. So you can come in after you pulse it a few times, give it a little stir. That can help kind of spread things around so you get an even or more even chopping of the nuts here. All right, here we go. Okay. Let's take a look. It's still seem a little bit big. Oh, those smell good. Let's do just a couple more quick little bursts here and see if we get it to where we want it to be. All right. So you just take this part slow. Definitely don't want to walk away from it. You can see where it's kind of starting to get really minced down in the corners and that's okay. I think I'm gonna just do it a couple more times. And try to get it as fine as possible here. All right, there we go. So I know that you can buy um, like nuts and things chopped up already at a grocery store. Do you think hmm. that would be, if you didn't have a food processor, processor, that would be okay? Or would it need to be much finer than what they provide at the store? I think it's gonna, yeah, cause you can get walnuts. So you can get walnuts, like these were whole walnuts with some pieces mixed in. And it's a, uh, they're kind of mid-range price. You can get exclusively whole, you know, walnuts. Those are usually the most expensive, and then you can just get the pieces. But even the pieces are going to be too big because those are the pieces are just the ones that break apart when they're removing the shell, right? So it's part of the deshelling process. Um, and then, but you can do this by hand, it just takes you some time. You know, you want to get a big knife. I think I cut a bunch of walnuts, was it last week or the week before? But you want to get a big knife like this, and you just keep going over, keep going over. Oh no, it was the cheesecake. That's right. So, um, but you can do it by hand. And we got a third a cup of sugar in there. And then we're going to just evenly mix the sugar in. So, I mean, if you want to get adventurous, I mean, you could put a little bit of spice in here if you wanted to. You don't have to stick to this recipe. You could definitely look up some other ones and kind of mix and match. Um, this is really the technique that you need to follow the most. Uh, but this is definitely a cool dessert where you can explore different flavors and different ingredients and see what you like best. Okay, so there's the walnuts. And then let's move the filo dough over here. Okay, so the filo dough, you buy it frozen, but uh, you're gonna need to thaw it out for this. So uh, usually I thaw it out the night before in the refrigerator so that it has a nice long period to thaw out. Uh, sometimes when it, if it thaws out too fast, it will kind of crack apart and it won't, it'll still be frozen in the center. Another thing is I'm not gonna open it up, this up quite yet. You wanna wait to open it until you're ready to use it because it dries out so fast. It's, it's much thinner than paper even, so. All right, so we've got our clarified butter, we've got our pan. You're also gonna need some kind of pastry brush. 
this one's kind of cool. It's a silicone one, but there's, you know, you could use a, like a fresh paintbrush or something like that that you can use. Um, and we're just gonna get, we're gonna coat the whole bottom here. We don't want it thick, but we definitely want a smooth coating. All right. So our bottom is ready and we're gonna open up our filo. And then we're gonna to need to cut this filo to shape. So let's move this stuff out of the way. We have a sharp knife and we're gonna unroll it. all folded up so just really gently stretch it out and then from here we're going to kind of measure well let's do it from here because this is the bottom where this is going to fit Oop. all right then we're going to cut that Now this should be about 20 pieces and the bottom layer we want a nice thick 20 pieces. So we're just going to take that whole thing and set it on the bottom. Now when I was first learning how to make this, I would take each sheet and brush butter on each sheet 20 layers to create this base. And it was um, <clears throat> very time consuming. So when we were researching ways to make it for 300, I was like, there's no way we're going to be able to do this the old way. And I ran into a Lebanese, this is, this is a Lebanese um, technique from what I can tell. All right, so fits pretty good in the base. It's kind of coming up the side a little bit there, that's okay. And then from here, we're gonna put our walnuts in and sugar. Okay, I'm gonna spread this around. So that extra bit of phyllo dough, you could wrap up and put in the freezer. If you're doing a nine by 13 inch pan, you're gonna use pretty much the whole piece. I don't have any nine by 13 inch pans in the Globe Kitchen, so. I'm stuck using these nine by nines, which is fine. And so this ends up being a little bit thicker on the filling here too. If you do a nine by 13, it's going to be pretty thin, but it still, it, it's great like that too. Okay, so here we go. Second package. I do have a question, Jesse. Um, for, I know that you put butter on the bottom of the pan. Is that mm -hmm. the best way to do it? Or can you use parchment paper to keep it from sticking? Yeah, so uh, we got to use butter. Um, and so that butter, what's doing for us on the bottom of the pan is it's holding that base piece down right now. And then this is going to get a lot more butter. So if you don't like butter that much, this probably isn't the dessert for you. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, the butter, it, this will not stick, like no, it, no matter what. And you don't, like parchment, you can't use parchment as a substitute, but you, you would never need to use parchment anyways or pan spray or anything like that. All right, so here's another one. Let's see what we got here. Let's try to cut this about right. This looks pretty good. Okay. So there's about another 20 pieces here. And now we want to make sure our top piece is very presentable. And so what I'm going to do is take, well, the uh, top piece looks pretty good. Just looking for one that doesn't have many wrinkles or any splits in it. So maybe I'll just flip that over like that. Okay, we're gonna, and then we're going to put one, two, three pieces to the side. And yeah, this stuff, oh, just ripped on. 
That's all right, we've got plenty here. Let's just leave that. Let's see if I can get another one. Once this opens up, you do need to move pretty quickly because it will uh, start drying up on you and getting crispy and really hard to work with. So, all right, let's go with this. About 20 pieces here, roughly. All right, so that fits there. Okay. From here, we're going to take our clarified butter. We're going to brush the top layer. Oops. If it moves around, it's all right. You just put, push things back. Even if it splits and might look terrible to you, just put it back in its place. And honestly, once it bakes, you can really hardly tell that anything bad happened. It's unforgiving when you're handling it, but once you bake it, it's very forgiving. And we want to get a full coat of butter here and it's not heavy coat. Get a full coat of butter. Okay. We're going to take one of the pieces we reserved at the side. We're going to put that on top. And then we're going to coat this one. Okay. Can you imagine doing this for each 20 pieces on the top and the bottom? It would take forever. I literally did that for like years. <laughs> for baklava and spina capita. I feel like if you did, it would have to somehow be turned into some sort of like ASMR calming video series <laughs> where you're just like smoothly putting butter yeah. on all of the dough. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, yeah, you could definitely, it's meditative, like you, you gotta be in the zone or you'll go crazy. All right, here's another one. And then I guess let's just do this one and then that'll be, we'll do one more on top. I do a few layers on top here. So what, what we're doing is we're trying to butter these so, and so that the top layer holds together really well because what we need to do is score this and cut through this before it bakes. Uh, once the phyllo bakes, it's really, really, you can't cut it without pretty much destroying it. So if we put this butter on here and stick these layers together on top, then when we go to score it, that whole top piece is going to hold together really well. Oh, of course my top piece got all messed up. That's all right. All right, so here we go. Oops. All right, move it a little bit. Okay. All right, so we're going to pat that in. Get all the surfaces covered. All right, looks good. All right, from here, we're going to cut with our knife. You want to get a nice big knife, very sharp. This is important. Uh, you could probably try to use a paring knife. Um, I don't know. I think a big knife would definitely be easier. We could try both. Let's see what a paring knife looks like. Let's see here. I like to test things out, investigate, figure out which way is the best. So I have my assumptions, but you never know what to try. All right, so here's a little paring knife. I'm going to go with my first cuts with my big knife because I know that's going to work. And so we want to cut diamonds into this, and it's a little bit tricky. You can also just cut squares, you know, that works too. But diamonds, we're going to have to go diagonal here. And so let's start in the corner. <clears throat> and you're going to put your knife straight down. You're going to put your fingers to hold that top in place. Okay. If it pops up, uh, that's okay. You can just put it back in place and you can go back over if you want to, if you feel like you didn't cut through. We're not trying to necessarily like cut all the way through to the bottom for sure, like the very final thing, but we do want to get cut most of the way through as best we can. 
So we're going through the top layer, the walnut layer, and that bottom 20. Because when we pour the butter on top of this, it needs to soak all the way in. All right. Here, a couple more. So, for our co host, do y'all have any stories or any like takes on a uh, baklava that you want to share? I'm curious, Chef Jesse, which one's your favorite um, baklava, like from which country? Well, I, I love pistachio baklava for sure. Um, and um, I've never, I've heard of like pomegranate syrup being in some and I'd love to try that. I've never tried that. Um, but definitely, I mean, I love the walnut with this, but I like just a straight up pistachio one is, is amazing. And um, I'm not sure exactly where that might be the most, you know, popular, but I would, I would think that Turkey would probably be a, um, a pistachio baklava kind of place, but. I know they love pistachios there. Anyways, let's keep cutting here. Um, so to do the diamond, we're gonna come back and we're gonna try to make a triangle in this area right here. And then we're gonna cut through. And the diamonds will only end up being formed on uh, the inner pieces, the sword of the diamond. And we'll have little triangles on the outside. Okay. Oh, that one's kind of rectangular. Oops. Quick question. Once you put it in the oven that you bring it back out, you would have to go over it again to cut them out back into the pieces, right? Uh, I'll show you. I've got one that I cooked off yesterday, and so I'm going to show you that. Um, and so we're not cutting all the way through the very bottom piece. You know, there's, there's definitely gonna be cut through in places, but, um, but yeah, you're gonna have to break it apart once it's baked. It is still kind of one large pastry. There we go, that's a little piece. So yeah, this is the most tedious part right here. So yeah, you just wanna take your time with it and try to get the best shapes you can. Cut a little piece right here. Oh shoot, you know what? I didn't even try the paring knife, I forgot. I was just all into my big knife. Oh well. I'll use the paring knife to cut this baked one. All right, so this looks great. Everything's in place. And then we've got the rest of our clarified butter and we're going to basically just pour it over top of the whole thing. And we're gonna kind of try to get it in all the different crevices. Our oven should be at 350 degrees preheated and ready to go here. Okay, so let's get all that butter in there. This is a rich dessert. Small pieces, small bites. Okay, so to get the butter to really go in there, you can come and open up these little crevices all around. Try to open it up to the bottom so it's gonna go down there. And as it bakes, honestly, this is going to all settle in. And it, it ends up baking perfectly even. There we go. Yeah, I like the big knife there. All right. There we go. All right, so this is going in. All right, so once this sits for a few minutes, you're going to put it in your... 350 degree oven. It's gonna go in for 30 minutes. And then you're gonna check on it and turn it, and put it in for another 30 minutes, okay? And while that is baking, let's slip it in the oven here. You're going to make a, oops, a sugar syrup, okay? So this is one cup sugar, three quarter cup, water and this kind of thickened up a little bit 
because it's been cooling over here, but it was a lot more thin when it was hot, but it was still looked like a syrup, okay? And so to this, you're gonna add two tablespoons of lemon juice. Whoops, that's a fork. Okay. And one tablespoon of your orange flower water. If you like a lot of orange essence, you can definitely add more. I wouldn't do more than two though, it'll get a little intense. All right, so it's gonna come back over here. We're gonna mix it up and heat it up a little bit more. This fan's gonna end up coming on. I'm gonna turn this on. All right, I'm just gonna get that lemon juice and that orange blossom water just kind of mixed in. I want this to melt down a little bit so you can see the thickness of the syrup you want. Uh, if you get if you cook it and it's that thick from when you cook it and you pour it on your baklava, it's gonna come out hard like candy. So you really want it to be a thin syrup. Uh, but if it's also, if it's too watery, then your baklava is gonna come out mushy. Oops. And you don't want that either. Okay. So this is just kind of warmed up a little bit here. So you can see where it's a little bit syrupy, just slightly watery. And then once it cools down, it thickens up into that perfect syrup. I'm going to set that aside. So your baklava is going to bake for 30 minutes. You're going to turn it. You're going to bake it for another 30 minutes. And uh, you're going to have your syrup finished and just hanging out over here, ready to go. When your baklava comes out, it's going to be hot. And you're going to pour your syrup over top. And this one was made yesterday. So everything should be lightly brown. There shouldn't be too much syrup sitting in the bottom of the pan. There's a little bit here. And then you come in and you cut through. There's suspiciously a piece missing. Jesse, what's that about? <laughs> I had, it was a quality control. <laughs> I had to make sure my recipe was on right. I had to. How was the quality? It was excellent. Perfect. Perfect. Very crispy just the right amount of syrup and uh, not too sweet but definitely sweet enough let's see here there we go there we go so you see the syrup soaked in here you got the nice crispy crust on the bottom and you have a nice crispy top layer of crust 20 pieces so one thing you can do at that hour point if you're if it's not as brown as this, one thing you want to do is check the center pieces. And so you can just lift off one of these and break apart. You don't want to break it apart, but you can fold it back. And you can tell, you can look at it and see if the dough's cooked or not. That's the, that's the one thing that can happen with baklava in baking it is you don't, you bake it either too hot, too fast, like your oven, even though it says 350, it's really 375 or 400. It's gonna brown really fast on the outside, but the inside's gonna be soft and like raw dough. And so one thing you should always do is check these center pieces. And when it's warm, these really, they, do, they fold back pretty easily. And so you can kind of see if it's cooked all the way through or not. And these are definitely cooked all the way through, very crispy. Because that's one of the worst things is getting that raw dough and you soak the syrup in the raw dough and it's just, it's not gonna be good at all. Yeah, so that is how we make baklava in the Globe Kitchen here. Um, thanks a lot for tuning in. And um, I think I'm going to take a break here for the next couple of weeks. You might see me in a video with the Peruvian Student Association. Um, but until, until then, I will hopefully see you all when we start back up in, in August with the cooking demos. But uh, thanks for tuning in. And um, back to you, Michelle. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jesse. We really appreciate it. All right.
So uh, thank you all again so much for being here today. We are going to definitely uh, move towards uh, the demonstration uh, by Flavia, and then we also have our breakout rooms. Um, but I do want to take a moment just to thank you all once again for being here and uh, for the FSU belly dancers for being here with us today. It's so exciting to partner with y'all. Um, so what we're going to do now is that if you would